Hello, uh, I'm Jack and I'm a 24 year old graphic designer based in Porto in Portugal. Um, I basically want to set up a graphic design channel uh, which is specifically about graphic design books. Not the most exciting channel you ever watch, but hopefully it's informative for someone who's trying to improve their graphic design skills. Um, so I want to give an unbiased opinion about the book, which includes obviously who wrote it, what the book's about, three biggest takeaways I have from reading that book, and then who should read the book and why. Um, so I'm going to upload a video every single Sunday uh, with a different book. Um, I know that the sound and the film quality is not excellent, but that's going to improve as I do more and more videos. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching the channel and hopefully I can teach you something. So the first book that I want to present on this channel is Aaron James Draplin's book called Pretty Much Everything. Uh, this was actually the first book that I read when I started graphic design, so I thought it would be fitting to, to present this week. Um, who is Aaron James Draplin? He is a bear of a man. Look at him. Um, he has got a personality as big as his frame, um, and he's an independent designer based in Portland, Oregon. Uh, he's had a really interesting career, which this book basically covers. Um, he got interested in graphic design and basically did logos and worked for friends, got working for a snowboarding magazine, um, then worked for a creative agency called Cinco Designs and then became an independent designer and um, did public speaking, has his own uh, set of merchandise now. He even sells ping pong balls, I found out. Does he play ping pong? I don't know, but I bet he's got a hell of a forehand. Um, but anyway, he's a really interesting guy to study because I think he has had the career that I think a lot of graphic designers would want. Um, he's worked on really cool projects, um, a lot of which are covered in this book, um, along with a lot of funny anecdotes that only Aaron James Draplin could tell. What is the book about? Um, first, the book covers Aaron's early years and then talks about how at high school he got very into punk rock and then he left home and eventually got his first job at Snowboarder magazine. Book then talks about how his career eventually ended up in him becoming independent designer and all the projects that he's worked on as an independent designer since then, including union binding and grenade gloves. Book then covers various anecdotal stories of how uh, his world basically influenced his design career. So his dog, for example, and created logos, etc. from that. And then it goes on to the rest of his career, which is to do with his merchandise, incredible array of things sold, along with his logos. And this is my favorite section of the book, which basically explains his process and the logos that he's made, some of which earn him absolutely nothing at all, but led to other work, which I think is a really important part of his career. There's a lot of funny stories in this book. For example, uh, Aaron Draplin talks about buying a sign because he uh, liked the font and uh, it actually went viral, this story. But he's done loads of things like that, like quite eccentric uh, things where he's digging around in second-hand shops to uh, find old gems. The book's absolutely full of colour as well, which is really nice to read because a lot of graphic design books I find are really dry, which is weird because graphic design is a very visual um, medium, but anyway. And finally, talks about all his speaking gigs that he's done and uh, posters from the gigs, etc. I think one thing that's uh, really interesting about this book is the conversational style uh, that the book has. and 
it's credit to Aaron that at the end of this book, all these uh, different drawings that have been done of him because he's just so well liked uh, and pretty famous in the graphic design world. So what are the three biggest takeaways from reading this book? I think the first one to say is that being a genuine person and being authentic is, uh, is really important to have a successful design career. Ultimately, people hire who they like, know and trust, um, to quote a guy called Marty Neumeier. Um, so you need to be honest and, and true to yourself. Oh, that's such a horrible phrase. But you get my point. I think Aaron's personality is a large reason uh, for his success. Um, I mean, you can't have your own set of merchandise um, without being well-liked. And uh, that's what he does really well. He's just 110% himself um, with a kind of take it or leave it character, um, which means that he's attracted people who work really, really well with him into his life and his career. And, and that's um, been a large reason for his success. So I think that's the first point, be authentic and genuine. Point number two, learn from this book, is that uh, don't be afraid of working for free. I think um, a lot of people in the design community say, oh, you shouldn't work for free, uh, it's not worth it, know your worth, stuff like that. Yeah, know your worth uh, and don't be taken for a ride. But at the same time, you know, if your friend has no money and he needs a logo, he or she needs a logo really quickly, um, then, you know, a human thing to do is just to help them out. Um, so yeah, your small contributions um, for free actually might be a massive deal for them. So um, do work for free um, if you if you need to. And then point number three is make your own stuff, whether it's for real clients or just for fun. Um, this is a really important one because basically you're not going to get work unless you actually make stuff uh, that you want to be paid for eventually. You need to show what you're capable of and hence, you know, doing stuff that you find fun and enjoyable is probably going to be your best work because you enjoy doing it and hence, you know, that's going to attract that kind of client um, to actually pay you to do it um, when you've practiced enough and when you've got good enough. So I think this is just a fundamental point, but always make stuff and uh, try and make things that you actually want to get paid for eventually as well. So who should read this book and why? Well, Aaron Draplin actually says at the end of his book who he wants uh, to read this. He says, I hope a kid who reads this will be inspired to look at a life in design in a little bit different way than the schlock that's fed to us. Doesn't sound very good in my accent, but we'll go with it. Uh, you don't have to hate your job. You don't have to accept working for clients who push you around. You can build your own life. Let the last 256 pages be a big meaty finger waved in the face of how they told me it was gonna be. So just to recap, the book, I think, um, from reading that quote is is for someone who is starting a life in design and uh, might have an impression of design um, that needs to be challenged. And I think Aaron Draplin's book is that challenge. It's saying the design world is sometimes quite pretentious, um, but it doesn't have to be. And you can work on your own terms, which I think is an attractive idea for, for anyone who's thinking about working in the design world. So if you think this book is relevant to you, which I really think it would be if you're watching this channel, um, then click on the link below. I'll put an Amazon link and at no extra cost to yourself, uh, you can contribute a few pennies to the channel and buy the book uh, on Amazon. So I hope that uh, video has been helpful if it has, write in the comments below. If it hasn't, write in the comments below. The more negative, the better, so I can wake up on a Monday morning on a high. Um, so yeah, next week I'm gonna be reading uh, a book called Creative Confidence by Tom and David Kelly. 
uh, which apparently is a fascinating book. So hopefully that will be relevant to someone else um, who's watching the channel. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.